Good morning. It's good to see everybody. If you'll get you a church hymnal and turn to page 143, we'll sing, My Jesus, I Love Thee. 143. start out singing about his love and we're still singing about him. I don't reckon that uh, uh, there's nothing dying about his love. Thank God there's no ending point to it. I appreciate the Lord and it's good to see you this morning. I'm glad several's back and hopefully recuperated from all this mess that's went around and, and uh, anyway uh, I was looking at a prayer list. I thought well it's still pretty long but <laughs> Well, just to keep a praying and Amen. trusting Amen. the Lord to take care of it. I'm glad he's able. And uh, But anyway, uh, uh, let me read this to you real quickly, and, and then we'll 
move on here and take up the offer and all that. But if you would, pray for Brenda Stanley, Norma Blevins, and Danny Minton, Danny Tester, and Robin Boardwine, Bobby and Gina and Charlotte Minton, uh, Brother Robert Schrader, and Bill Donahue and Billy Craddock, Matthew Canner, Tony Ridge, Wayne and Renee Mullins, Johnny and Pat Burton, uh, James Cable and Chris Selders, um, Robbie and Kara Gabbard, and David Gabbard, continue to pray for Mr. Green and all the family, uh, continue to pray for the lost, and then pray for Phyllis Carver, and Olima Rice, and Ruth Thornburg, Gail Ripplinger, Hattie Crane and Judy Campbell, Linda Berry, Karen Padgett, Barbie McMurray, and Becky Garrison, Rita Smith, and then uh, Brother Danny Black is in health care and in rehab. Uh, and uh, so it uh, says here that they put his address on the bulletin board um, back in the back of the church if you'd like to ride him or, or go see him or whatever. Then if you would pray for all the missionaries that's not on there, pray for Brother William. They're going over to Brother Gary Green's tonight and uh, the next two or three nights and preaching for them a meeting and I pray the Lord just blesses them and helps them and moves in there and, and but uh, anyway it's good to see you this morning and we good to have some visitors with us and I hope the Lord will bless you and, and do for you but we're going to get the ushers to come real quickly and we'll take up the offering and you give the Lord he's blessed you and then we'll get them back up here to sing maybe maybe in another week we can get back in the choir and all of that Amen. good stuff but Anyway, pray for Terry. He's flying out going to Denver this evening and uh, give him prosper his journey going for work. But anyway, I just want him to get there and get back safely. All right, Brett, if you would, you pray for us. We're thankful for another opportunity to be in your house. Pray that you bless you through the service, through the week, Lord, and pray God you <clears throat> each request been made known today, God. We pray for that. And Lord, uh, thank you for allowing us to assemble together, Lord. You said, uh, Lord, fail not to assemble ourselves together. Uh, as a matter of some is, so much more of the day as we see this day approaching, Lord, and we certainly see it approaching. We see the day of the Lord approaching. And, Father, I pray that you'd bless, Lord, and uh, what we do ask to pray for the lost, Lord. <coughs> Those that might not know you today, Lord, I pray, God, that you convict their hearts and their minds and lives, God, and be able to come to the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, God, the only hope of eternity in heaven. And Father, we thank you now. Yeah. Bless through this service, and we'll uh, thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Where the soul never dry, dies. Thank God. Yeah. 
more. Let's sing number 40. I know, or 340, I'm sorry. I know whom I have believed. I'm glad you can know him. You can know the Lord. I mean, he wants to know you. He wants you to come and speak to him. He wants you just to fellowship with him. It doesn't matter if you're saved or lost. He wants the same thing. He wants you. He wants you to be around. He loves you. It doesn't matter. You can come to him. <coughs>
sure we sure can. I appreciate the assurance that we have. Amen. It's not based on what we do or how we act or what we remember. I sent back a video of an elderly lady that's got dementia, and the interviewer was interviewing her. She couldn't remember what she ate, where she lived. She didn't even remember her children. But he said, who's Jesus? And her eyes brightened up. She Amen. said, he's my Savior. Amen. He said, he lives in my heart. Amen. And he's going to take me home. Amen. She said, I love him. Amen. But I was thinking, even if she didn't remember him, Amen. that don't change Jesus. He don't forget. Amen. He won't forget you. He knows where you're at. I know sometimes you think he may not know where you're at. He knows exactly where you're at. Because he paid for you with his blood. He came and died for you. Sought you out. He, I didn't seek him out. I wasn't looking for Jesus. That's right. He came to where I was and, and, and sought me out. Amen. He, he's not forgotten where I'm at. I mean, I know we think that a lot of times, but he doesn't forget forget us or where we're at. Amen. And I got something to thank you for. I know Dan don't feel good, but a couple times during the week I just seen a smile come across his face. Amen. And I just said, Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. You know, just a little smile, but Amen. Amen. Kent smiled a long time. Amen. And I, I smiled you come across his face Amen. and I said, Yeah. I said, I recognize what you did, God. Amen. It's yeah. little, but I recognize yeah. it. Amen. And I want to thank you. Amen. Amen. 181.
show you right where. Look, here you go. This is just a email. You start right there and go down through there to right there. You can read that because I'm not able to read it. But he was talking about that man uh, didn't know or his lady didn't know where she's at. That man there, I, he's gonna read it. He's gonna read this email I sent out. That's been a year ago or more, maybe. But anyway, this is the same deal. He didn't know where he is at. I mean, he did. He didn't really. He didn't know much. But uh, but when I started talking to him, it was my great uncle, and I started talking to him. You read that, Terry, right there for right. me. I won't be able to read it. Uh, let's read that right there. <laughs> He said, well, being forgetful definitely can be an issue as we get older. Yeah. But I do have some good news concerning spiritual forgetness, forgetfulness. I thought I'd better share this with you all that could be encouraged. Below is a picture of my dad's cousin on his mother's side, whose name was John Ed Richards. John Ed was raised up in Holston Mountain during the early years of his life. He lived in Irwin, Tennessee. During the later years of his life, he worked for the railroad there. I always tried to visit him as much as I could. As his health and mental capacity deteriorated and declined, I would continue to visit him. He eventually ended up in a nursing home in Johnson City, and his mental condition continued to deteriorate. And on one occasion, as I was visiting him and talking with him, he was speaking about electrical work that he did at the railroad and many other things which did not really make good sense which is often the case with these types of situations he really didn't even seem to know or be aware of who he was or where he was at or at what his situation was however I began to ask him about his younger days and eventually got around to inquiring as to his converse, conversion to Christ his mentality seemed to clear immediately. And he related some details concerning the events. And as his picture below shows, he lifted his hands and having tears in his eyes indicated that under, the, under his diminished and deteriorated shell of a man that soon would not be a resident of this world, another man existed that would not grow old nor deteriorate and diminish men yeah. mentally and physically. A man that had a hope that he had received in his early years of life that, he would, that would never yeah. leave him or forsake him. And it says 1 Corinthians 15, 19. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of, most, of all men most miserable. And that's it. Yeah, amen. Amen. We got some, uh, we got lost people in here that come here once in a while, and uh, God knows who they are, and they've been they've been under conviction and stuff. I don't know if they made a move on it yet, but y'all pray for them and. Uh, but uh, it's dangerous to play games with God. I mean, you better get in if you ain't in there. Amen. <clears throat> you, you won't regret it when you do get in there. <laughs> but God knows who they are. And if he wanted me to come up here and tell you all about it, you know he's concerned about it. <laughs> but, but I love you all. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Listen to him. The Bible said, harden not your heart, as in the days of provocation. I mean, if you hear his voice, if you hear his voice, you might ought to do something. And if you don't, sit there till you do. But don't use that as an excuse. You've got plenty enough excuses, but don't excuse yourself into hell. I mean, 
Listen. Listen. Now, if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn this morning real quickly uh, to back to Psalms 119. And for some of you, don't worry, I'm not going to preach out of Psalms 119 for the next 22 services like I did in the past. <laughs> Literally. But I'll probably spend a, another one or two here. And uh, I want to look at a few things. Thursday night I preached out of the first eight verses. This morning I want to read just for a little bit. Uh, I want to tie about three of these together if I can, if the Lord allows and, and time allows and all of that. And, uh, but I want you to listen to this. This, is, this will help you. This is a blessing. And uh, starting in verse 9, it said, uh, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereunto according to thy word? With my whole heart have I sought thee, O let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. With thy lips have I declared all, thy, all the judgments of thy mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. And I will delight myself in thy statutes, and I will not forget thy word. Verse 17 says, Deal, deal bountifully with thy servant that I may live and keep thy word. Open thou mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. I am a stranger in the earth, hide not thy commandments from me. My soul breaketh uh, for the longing that it hath unto thy judgments at all times. Thou hast rebuked the proud that are cursed, uh, which do err from, the, uh, from thy commandments. Remove from me reproach and contempt, for I have kept thy testimonies. Princes also did sit and speak against me, but thy servant did meditate in thy statutes. Thy testimonies also are my delight and my counselors. My soul cleaveth unto dust, quicken thou me according to thy word. I have declared my ways, and thou heardest me. Teach me thy statutes. Make me to understand the way of thy precepts, so shall I talk of thy wondrous works. My soul melteth for heaviness. Strength, strengthen thou me according unto thy word. Remove from me thy way, remove from me the way of lying, and grant me thy law graciously. I have chosen the way of truth. Thy judgments have I hid before me. I have stuck unto thy testimonies. O Lord, put me not to shame, and I will run the way of thy commandments, which thou hast enlarged my heart. Fathers, we bow before you. We come to you this morning, Lord, desperately needing you. Lord, we need you today, Father. As being said, those that, Father, you've been dealing with and touching and speaking to concerning your salvation, Lord, I pray, Father, you'd be merciful this morning. I pray you'd come by and do it again. Lord, I pray if it takes you shaking them over hell, Father. Lord God, let them find out that's where they're headed. God, you'd do a work here, Lord. God, we thank you, Father, for all that you've done for us. Lord, I appreciate it. Lord, I'm glad today, Father, you, you, we've, we've talked and sung all morning about thy love. God, thank you so much, Lord, for that. Thank you for the love of God that never fails. And the Bible said uh, charity covered the multitude of sin. God, I'm glad it's all covered this morning with the love of God. I ask you today once again just to have your will and your way around here, Lord. God, we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to look at this for a little while this morning, uh, just for, uh, and I'm, I'm aware of the time and all of that, but anyway, I'm not going to worry so much about that. I'll say this, uh, ever since Thursday I left here, and I've been preaching ever since. <laughs> whether I'm mowing, whether I'm uh, working around here, whether I'm sitting at the house or whatever, I've been preaching ever since. I've had this on my heart, and I don't know if you ever feel like that, but uh, so I've been preaching for two or three days, so y'all can handle 20 or 30 minutes here. 
And uh, I mean, I got two or three days worth that I'm going to try to give you. And I, I hate doing that. I mean, in, in one sense, because I think of so many things as, as uh, the hours and time. I wake up during the middle of the night thinking about these things. And, and I think, well, I need to make sure I don't forget that. But I've got this old brain right here and there's so many things I'm going to forget. But I'd like to, if you'd pray for me for a few minutes, talk to you about some of these things. I started on this probably last Sunday, to be honest, when, when I was reading this and, and talked about uh, uh, Daniel a little bit and uh, thinking that it's a possibility uh, that Daniel may have wrote this. I don't know that. I can't prove it. I can't disprove it. Uh, the, uh, there's uh, several that have said could have possibly wrote this. I'd never even considered Daniel until I began to look at these verses right here. Uh, in verse 9, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his ways by taking heed there into an, uh, into his word. And But Daniel was in captivity. I'm not going to go back and talk about all that, but I do want to talk about these three Hebrew words that are in here. And as I said Thursday night, and I said it before, I'm not a Hebrew scholar. I know nothing about Hebrew, to be honest about it. Uh, but I got to looking at this some time back. And uh, the first one that I want to look at, if you'll look in your Bible, most Bibles have this. Sammy informed me that his Bible does not have it, so yours may not also. But in my Bible, it says uh, above verse 9, it says bet. Uh, that's a Hebrew word. That's the second Hebrew word. And then uh, in verse 17 above it, it says gamil. That, as I said, that's another Actually, I say Hebrew word. It's not a word. It's a letter. It's the Hebrew alphabet. There's 22 of these through here. This is the Hebrew alphabet. And then above verse 25 is the leth. I want to touch on those three uh, words this morning and in, kindly in their context. Uh, this word bet, if you'll look at it, it's a house. It's a type of a house. And if you'll notice something about this house, it's got, a, it's got a roof on it, it's got a floor in it, and it's got a wall. But what I want to really call your attention to, it's got an open door, thank God. And I appreciate that. Now I want to say this, most of, most of us uh, think about a house as a place that we live in. But I want to say this, uh, talking about this house, this is an entrance. Uh, actually, if you'll notice, if you'll read this again, I won't read it. But if you'll notice some things uh, through these eight verses, uh, from uh, verse 9 to uh, verse 16, it talks about time and time again about ways. This is uh, access. It's the entrance into the ways of God. And I want to I want to mention this to you. God has got somewhere that. Uh, let me say, you start out somewhere, and God has got somewhere He wants you to wind up. Amen. I mean, there's there's just, that's just the way it is. But this is an entrance. It's a wide open door. It's an entrance to the provisions of God. It's an entrance to God's help. It's an entrance to God's journey. I mean, it's an entrance to God's uh, ways. I mean, not not it it, it entrance to His outcome not our outcome. I noticed when I was looking at this the other day, I got to thinking about something. This hit me strange. I've never seen it before, but it hit me strange. I got to thinking about uh, the children of Israel. The last two words in the book of Genesis, you'll find out where the children of Israel are. And I'm talking about where God wants you to be. Uh, uh, you'll find out it says they are in Egypt. Uh, you'll come over to the next book in Exodus. You'll, the last two words in the book of Exodus, you'll find out they are in their journeys. And then you go over to the book of Leviticus and you find out where they're at there. They're at Mount Sinai. And uh, then you'll come over to uh, the book of Numbers. And the last two words in the book of Numbers, they're in the, uh, the uh, region of Jericho. And then you come over to the, uh, the fifth book of the Bible, Deuteronomy. You'll find out God has got them where he wanted them all the time. The Bible said they're in Israel. Thank God he brought them from Israel, I mean, and took them all the way. Uh, I mean, he took them from uh, Egypt all the way into Israel. He took them to the promised land, to the place he wanted them to be. That's the way our life is. I mean, he, 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 uh, this, this young man is asking, how can I find out the ways of God? 
And so that's where he, that's how he wants it to go. That's how he wants us to be, thank God. And, and so there's an open door. There's an entrance if you're sitting here this morning, you may be like the children of Israel. You're down in Egypt this morning. That's what Ben was talking about. You may be in captivity of your sin, but God has something for you. Amen. There's an open door. That's the first step. Going, that's the first step of the provisions, the protection, the plan of God is going through the door. Jesus said, I am the door. Thereby, if any man enter in, he shall go in and out and find green pastures. If you want to know what God's got for you, the first thing you have to do is come to Jesus. Let me add, Terry was talking about this in Sunday school. He was talking about being humble. And, and that's what this uh, third word means. I'll get to that in a little bit. But what I want to say about that is this. Uh, the way that uh, Israel got out of Egypt was by being humble. The, the way out was they began to cry out to God. That was the first step. They began to cry out to God. And the next step was God began to hear and answer. Now that brings us to where I really want to get down here and preach. I mentioned just a little bit about this uh, the other night, Thursday night. Uh, this next word is Gamil. And uh, I preached this some time back, I believe back in, I didn't know this till the other day somebody sent me a text. I believe it's back in uh, in 22 that I preached these 22 words. And uh, But anyway, uh, Gamil means camel. That is uh, the provisions of God. But I got to studying this even more, and I found it in the Scriptures. It means more than that. Now, let's, let me say this real quickly. Uh, talking, about, uh, uh, talking about this word gamil. It's a rich man running after a poor man. And he's running after him. To give him those provisions. This is a man in need. The poor man is a man in need. And he needs something. Yeah. And, and this is a strange situation. Because you really don't find that too much here on the earth. That a rich man is pursuing a poor man to supply his needs. But I read that in the scriptures. For our God shall supply all of our needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Now the best, uh, I never, I just got to reading some of these things and I got to thinking about this. Uh, the best uh, example that I have in the Bible for this situation would be over in Genesis chapter 24 where the Bible said that Abraham called his eldest servant to go out and to find a bride for his son Isaac. Now, it said this in, in chapter 24 and verse 10, and the servant took 10 ta camels, and I'm talking about this gamel as a type of camel, Amen. and he took 10 camels uh, of the camels of his master and departed for all the goods of his master were in his hand. He's pretty rich, isn't he? I mean, he had everything that Abraham had at his access. He loaded those 10 camels on there, and he went looking for somebody that did not have anything. He went looking for a bride for uh, Abraham's son Isaac, and he goes out there, and he went to a place called Nahar, a city called Nahar. Uh, no, let me say that. Let me rephrase that. That is not what it says. It says the city of Nahar, not a city. And what that is is Ur of Chaldeas. That is, Nahar is his relative. That's where he lived. He was in Ur. He went back to that place. Uh, and uh, let me say, uh, as, as this servant goes, he goes down to that place and he begins to call on the Lord and he said, if you've made this journey prosperous, if, uh, I mean, and he starts talking about uh, uh, somebody coming and drawing water. And he said, if this is the one, Amen. this is the one, let her give water to me, but also the camels. But then I want you to notice what happens. As soon as he begins to communicate with Rebecca, 
and she receives anything that he's saying. See, some people come to church and they just block it all out. But she showed interest in it. She showed interest in this man and what he had to say, and who he was. I mean, showed, I mean, you might be here and you might have just a little bit of interest in what's going on. But I want to say this. As soon as he seen her, I, n- I never really looked at this until I was reading it yesterday. And I'm talking about a rich man running after a poor man. The Bible said in Genesis 24 and verse 17, and the servant ran to meet her. I mean, that servant, here she was. Now, she was just a poor girl down in Ur of Chaldeas, this ungodly country. And, I mean, she might not even have been a bad person. I mean, but she just didn't know anything about Abraham. She didn't know anything about that promised land. She didn't know anything much at all, but all of a sudden, here's a man, I mean, my God, he looked like he is loaded down with riches, and he's running after her. Amen. He's seen her and began to run after her. And, uh, and he said, and, and let me pray thee, I, I mean, give me a little drink of water in the pitcher. And he, she was willing to acknowledge him. You know, the first thing that he done, when, I mean, nothing else takes place other than she gives him water and the camel's water. There's nothing else taking place here. And this is what he done. I'm talking about a rich man and, and running after somebody that is poor and needy. And I'm not here preaching Joe Osteen this morning. <laughs> you forget that business. But I'll tell you what he done. The Bible said he said he took a half of a shekel of an earring and placed it on her face. He ran after her and he's trying to overtake her. See, what I'm trying to say is you may be poor and needy here and you might not know what to do. Just humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. He'll overtake you. And then he took uh, 10 shekels, uh, the weight of gold, and placed it on her. Now, I've, I've read that several times. I'm trying to find out if each, each bracelet weighed 10 shekels or both of them combined. I really can't find that in the scripture uh, that explains it to me. But either way, at a minimal, he put on her wrist, at a minimal, about $5,000, and he just met her. <laughs> I'm trying to talk to you about, oh, Lord God. A rich man looking for you. You sitting here lost and undone. And it's not that you're seeking after God. He's running towards you. He's trying to overtake you with the good love of God and the grace of God. He's trying to make you, though he was rich, he became poor that we might be made rich. Oh, Lord God, he's trying to overtake you. With just the goodness of God, he running towards you. You wouldn't see, somebody said, Jimmy said it this morning, I wasn't seeking him. Oh, but he is seeking you, Jimmy. He, you might not have been running to him. In fact, I've heard your testimony time and time again. I mean, Jimmy says, he said, I started to stand up, but he said, they'll laugh at me. And he'd hold on to the pew and sit down. But that didn't stop the Holy Ghost from running toward Jimmy. It didn't stop him from running toward you. He wants to overtake you. He's wanting to provide for you, thank God. You don't have anything to give him, but he got everything to give you. Hallelujah. I thought of another situation here. You remember over in Luke chapter 15 where there's a prodigal? Well, let me back up here. I'm going to get ahead of myself just a little bit. See, we're talking about he, he laid on her gold, give her bracelets, earrings. But I'm about to skip the best thing. All through the journey, you'll find out that he's given her things. She says, I'll go with you. And she got on that camel. And she started back to that land. See, I'm talking about Israel started out in Egypt. 
but then wound up where in Israel. She started out Ur Chaldeas and wound up where Isaac was over in that promised land. That's the journey we're on. Now let me say this. During that journey, there's a lot of good things given to her, I'm sure. But the best thing I can find, the Bible said in, in Genesis 24 and verse 67, when they pulled into the land and she seen somebody coming toward them and she asked that, elder, that servant, said, who is this? He said, that's my master's son. That's him right there. Bible said she veiled herself. And she got off that camel. Boy, when she went up there. But you want me to show you the best thing, the, the richest thing in this? The Bible said in verse 67, and he loved her. <laughs> oh, Lord God. I'm talking about he's running after you. Not, not like this crowd preaches that he's going to beat you up and kill your dog. No, he's pulling. He wanting to love you. Thank God. <laughs> he's not trying to wreck your vehicle or anything else to get you right. He's trying to get you a pl to a place. He wanting to love on you, thank God. <laughs> Said this has been a good journey. Lord, you've, <laughs> you've put things on me. All, you've blessed me all the way. But, Lord God, I never thought it'd be like this. I never thought I'd have anybody to love me like this. I never really thought I'd have anybody when I was down there in the earth of Chaldeans that would ever love me. But, thank God, you brought me out of there, and I've got the lover of my soul. I've got somebody that's with me all the time. The Bible said uh, he took her into that tent. He knew her, and the Bible said he was comforted. I'm glad we've got the God of all comfort. Yeah. Hallelujah. See, he ain't here this morning to do you ill. He's running after you to bless you, to overcome you. Yeah. Say, so how do I get that? Well, the next word, and I'm just trying to hurry. I don't know what time it is. It's 12 o'clock. Lord, I got all kinds of time. <laughs> See, that's the reason verse 17 starts out when it's talking about this camel and this man running after. He said, deal bountifully with me. That's the only way the Lord wants to deal with you Amen. is bountifully. Amen. And the only way you don't receive that is to reject him. But if you'll let him, he'll deal bountifully with you. He wants to deal with you that way. He wants to love on you. He wants, Lord God, he wants you to come to the house of God or, or just get in your word, get in a prayer closet or whatever. You'll never come out the same. He'll always put something on you. Lord, I've wanted to come and preach this for days. I want to tell you how good God is. I want these youngins to know that God has got more than the world's got. I want them to know he'll be better to you than they'll be better. They're lying, but he'll be good to you. In fact, this whole crowd's lied on God. Amen. They've lied on him. He's running to you to help you. Yeah. Say, how do I get that? Well, this, this next word, Doleth, is a person in need. There's the qualification. And, and if you'll look at it, I tried to describe it a little bit the other night. I'm not good at describing these, but these letters has a, uh, they tell me that that's a, a man bending over. He has humbled himself. He realized that God is his only help. He's the only resource. He's the only one you can depend on. He's the only one I need. Thank God. And when he humbled himself, he was overtaken by the blessings of God. Best thing ever happened to me was when I bowed before the Lord. Amen. That's how I said this earlier. I tell the children of Israel, God out of Egypt. I mean, there's a Pharaoh down there that knew not Joseph. And I mean, it got bitter. This whole world will get bitter. This life will get bitter. But you can hum humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and wait on him right there. He's running towards you. And I just skipped the prodigal. <laughs> but I want to say this, that prodigal... I mean, he even got himself in a mess. He decided, I'm going to do this. 
I'm going to back up. I'm not going to. Lord God. Lord reminded me. I'm going to tell you about the prodigal a minute. Here he was. He, and most of this crowd, well, he got what he deserved. And, and I mean, well, that's right. The Bible said, if you sow into the flesh, you shall the flesh reap corruption. And if you sow into the Spirit, you shall the Spirit reap uh, life everlasting. Well, I ain't packing that off on God because I sowed to the flesh. I'm reaping what I done. God didn't do that to me. Quit packing it off on God because of the situation you're in. Best thing you can do is humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and he'll run towards you. Say, well, they don't deserve it. We'll talk to the prodigal about it because he had done went down there and uh, wasted all of his goods on riotous living and done everything like that. And I mean, I, don't, I can't preach all of his sins. I don't know all the sins, but I know this. The Bible said he would have fain had filled his belly, belly with the, uh, the husk that the swine did eat. But he came to himself. And he said, in my father's house, Hallelujah. In my father's house. There's enough in my father's house. Boy, I remember how rich my father was. Hallelujah. You know what he done? He headed home. And you know what the father done? As soon as he seen him, here he is. Here the father is running. <laughs> here he took off again. Lord God, same spirit that uh, Eliezer, that eldest servant had. I believe, in fact, he, I believe uh, they, 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 it's just the same kindred spirit. He said, that's my boy there. Amen. Now, the last thing you find out about uh, Rebecca, the Bible said he loved her. But I want to say this about the prodigal. That's the first thing you find out about him. <laughs> he ran up to him. And immediately, he didn't put nothing on him, but he fell on his neck and kissed him. You know what? I believe he said, my father still loves me. I don't care where you've been, what you've been through, how far out there you've been. He still loves you. He still loves you this morning. Thank God. I don't know about you, but that means a whole lot to me because I've been sorry as hell. I ain't been no good, but he still loves me. And just on in, he'll come by and kiss me, thank God. Say, he don't deserve it. Well, it belongs to the Father. He can do with it what he wants to. Then the next verse you'll find out, that old boy says, Father, forgive me. He already had forgiven him. And he looks to the rest of the crowd. He said, I want you to go over where the riches are. And I want you to bring them over and give them to this boy. Go over there in the, in the coat closet and get the best one. Put it on him. And go over and get the best shoes. He come back barefooted. But I got, I mean, get the best one. That's the, and get my ring. Everything he puts on you causes you to identify to him. That's what happened to Rebecca. That's what happened to the prodigal. But you know what the prodigal had? To, he just humbled himself. Yeah, thank God. See, the Lord's a whole lot better than we think we, he is. Hallelujah to God. But now let me go on. Let me go on here. In verse 25, just above it, it talks about this delayeth. And as I said, I can't, I'm not good at uh, illustrating these, this writing or whatever, but they say it to be an over man. He's a man in need. And, and he's humbled himself. He's come to the end of his rope. He can't do nothing else. He don't have no more strength. He's tried this and he's tried that and he's tried everything. But then, he, and this is what he says. He said, my soul cleaveth unto the dust. Quicken thou me according to thy words. I mean, so I've tried it all. He said, I'm, I'm just cleaving to the dust. Got nothing left. Nothing I can do. But then I read the last verse of that. When thou enlarge my heart. Thank God. 
And I, I've been thinking about that a lot. See, the Bible said, he said, <clears throat> Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Oh, Lord. Here's a feller, he just, he said, I need some help. I've been everywhere else. Prodigal had been down to the hog pen. He'd lived it up. Rebecca was in Ur of Chaldees. I want you to notice something. I was preaching this about Daniel, but I thought about that. <clears throat> we get a little bit of the uh, knowing a little bit about Ur of Chaldeans because of Daniel. Daniel was, that's what they wanted to teach him, the ways of the Chaldeans. They thought their ways were superior ways. They thought their language was superior. They thought their meat was superior. They thought their wine was superior. But it was inferior in every way. And that's all they have to offer you out here is something that's inferior to every, in every way. But this man, he come to God and he said, I need your help now. I need you. Amen. Whatever your situation is here today, if you're lost, you need the Lord. Amen. If you're hurting, we all need the Lord. Amen. There is no other help. The Bible said in 1 Peter 5 and 6, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. You know what that verse says to me? <clears throat> when you bow down to him, don't worry, he's running. He's getting ready to overtake you. You say, well, I've, I've thrown it all away. We'll wait till he gets there. I've wasted it all on righteous living. We'll wait till he gets there. At some point, this has blessed me this past week because there's just things around here that I can't, I can't fix. There's just things I don't know what to do with. I hear people say all the time, well, this one would have done it that way, and this one would do it this way. And I get sick of hearing that. If you want my honest opinion about it. I really want to know what God's going to do with it. I, that's the one I want to know. So I found out this week over the last few days, I just go in there and crawl on my face and I say, Lord, this is yours. Now I'm waiting on you to overtake this thing. I'm waiting on the rich man to show up and show the poor man what to do. <laughs> I'm waiting on an answer from heaven. And that's the best thing you can do. And if you're lost, that's the, best, that's the only thing you can do. I'm waiting on somebody else to show up. Yeah. Thank God. But he said, I thought about this verse in, in, in Psalms 10, verse 17. The psalmist cried out and said, Lord, thou hast heard the desire of the humble. Thou wilt prepare their heart. Thou wilt cause thine ear to hear. Amen. And then in Psalms 34, and verse 2, it said, My soul maketh her, her boast in the Lord, the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Here's somebody in need, but all of a sudden there's going to be some joy in it. When he shows up on the scene, thank God. Yeah, this, this word humble, all I can figure is just somebody completely dependent upon the Lord. I got thinking back on that. That's how I got saved. I just completely depended upon the Lord. And I thought, that's how everybody gets saved. Amen. You throw up your hands. Right. So I'm, ain't nothing I can do. <laughs> but as long as you're trying yourself as far as some of the, you can write it off. <clears throat> but I sure thank God that there's somebody coming. Amen. And when he came down here, Lord, he come with all of heaven. And what I want to say is he'd like to bring you out of the graveyard, give you life, 
And let me say this, and, and let's take it in the right spirit. He wants to enrich your life. I'm not talking about with silver and gold. Oh, Lord. The first thing that old feller found out was he loves me. He still loves me. Last thing she found out was he loves me. But I, you say, why is that? Why is that the last time? You'll never know that he really loves you until you meet him. And that's when she met him. You're sitting here lost and you're having doubt. Won't you try to, won't you just let, get in a relationship with him. You'll find it out. He's better than I can preach. I'm feeble. I, I'm, I, I, my, my preaching is feeble. Everything about me, I can't describe him. I do not have the, there is a language barrier between my mind and my tongue that cannot express, <laughs> express God. Can't do it. But don't let anybody tell you that he don't love you because he does. Amen. And he won't do for you. Yeah, just humble yourself and see what he'll do. Yeah. Humble yourself and see what he'll do. Thank God. <clears throat> I thought, one, and I'm going to give you one more verse, and I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quit here in a minute. <laughs> it don't matter how high, lofty, whatever people think they are. In fact, there's a, there's a statement in Jeremiah 13, verse 18. It said, Say unto the king and to the queen, Humble yourselves, sit down, for your principalities shall come down, even the crown of your glory. You know, I think that scripture almost says the same thing. It's hard for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. I'm talking about <clears throat> the only reason is they've got so many things to hold to, they cannot humble themselves and say, I have no hope. But he tells them on with Jeremiah, he said, Your principalities shall come down. Even the crown of your glory, it'll be brought down. No matter rich, poor, small, great, makes no difference. <clears throat> you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, he's chasing you down. He's looking for you. He wants he wants to bless you. He wants to extend mercy to you. He wants to be gracious to you. The Bible said, but God, who is rich in love. Oh, he's wanting to give that, all of the riches of his love to you. He wants to demonstrate it. Thank God. And I'm going to say this. <clears throat> Just like the children of Israel started out in Egypt. And wound up in Israel. That's the, that's the same thing as the type of the church. We wound up dead in sins and trespasses, but that ain't where he's wanting to leave you. He's wanting to give you everlasting life, living with him. There's an outcome to the thing. There's an there's a outcome to the house. Thank God. You start in one place and wind up somewhere else. And it all starts with going in the door. Thank God. And I appreciate the Lord. I don't know what to do most of the time. If you need to do something, you do it. If not, I'll let you go to the house here in a minute. Yeah. Killers laying below me. God was all, I mean, they, I was all right when he showed up. The problem is I just didn't stay, of course. I'm one of them stubborn ones, you know. But that flesh will get you, I mean, these youngins don't know. They want to turn 18, 19, run out here in the world. They, you ain't missing nothing. I mean, I wish I, it breaks my heart because we're so stubborn. And uh, 
Man, it, it tears me up if I could go back, knowing what I know now. But I tell you what, the Lord, I mean, it, it's been great the last six months because I've had this. What do you mean? I've had him. And it's been, it's been a blessing because I've had time to just sit and wait on God to show up and show me things. And then you said it, it's when you come to yourself. When you come to yourself, that's when it becomes real. All the preaching in the world and everything, I mean, it's it, it, until you come to yourself and you remember all of it, the 20 years, all you, God, how good he's been. And he'll always be there. You Amen. fall seven times seven, major. I mean, it's a rough road. But <laughs> the spiritual part, I mean, that's just staying with God. Regardless, he'll never leave you. Now, I'm, I'm always running from him. He's always chasing me. But when you finally turn around, there's no words to describe it. The feeling of joy and peace and comfort. The liberty he gives you. You don't worry about what anybody's thinking, what's going on, how to do it. I ain't got the answers, can't figure it out. When you just give it all to him, 100%, I, I have a feeling it will work out. Amen. 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 showed up there in my car on break and I called him I said, I need to come talk to you. And uh, I started talking with him and he's like, hey, yeah. we well, he's just talking and then I was like, I don't know, I'm just glad God came by. And he looked at me and he's saved and he said, uh, what do you mean God come by? And I said, you don't ever feel him? I mean, right. Right. what? <laughs> but I mean, so, that religious junk in the wrong Bible, that's trash, you ain't burn that stuff. But uh, but I feel sorry for him. I mean, yeah. just pray for him. I don't know. Yeah. But I think yeah. I'm, I'm going to get out of that joint. <laughs> I'll just, well, I'll just tell you. I was sitting there scrolling through Facebook, or whatever, not Facebook, YouTube, this morning in my bed, and uh, I don't, <laughs> that's crazy. But uh, I see one of them metal forming machines that Brett's got come rolling down through there, all that sheet metal. And uh, God started pounding on me. He said, you need to get out of that hard rock. <laughs> so I'm going to come work for you to let me. <laughs> I'm sure I think of God in you, Brad. But I've been miserable over there at that hard rock. There's a bad spirit there. Man, everybody's so religious. And his, his brother is lost, and he's... He's their brothers and they own that joint. He ain't gonna wanna get saved with all that religious crap around there. He gets God to come by there. Amen. But I don't know, just pray for him. <laughs> I don't know what to do. The world needs some help. Amen. Anybody else? All right, no, and I'm gonna let you stand to your feet. We'll go here in a minute. <clears throat> But I do want you to remember the service tonight. Pray for William and them as they go over. And I hope the Lord blesses them. Amen. Amen. All right. I'm going to ask Brother Willie if he would to dismiss us this morning. Our Father, in Jesus' name, we come, Lord. We want to come and say thank you one more time. Thank you, Lord, to your darling son, the Lord Jesus. Lord, I thank you for the Word of God this morning. I'm glad, our Father, it's our comfort. <clears throat> our Father, I thank you, Lord, that it's the breath of God. Lord, I'm glad that we can drink of it this morning. Lord, as we sit here and we hear the preaching, Lord, I'm glad that that day when he come by, he should have put his foot on our neck and broke it. Yeah. <clears throat> but he didn't do it. But he kissed our soul. He loved us. God wouldn't tell you we appreciate it. Yeah. <clears throat> we don't take that lightly. I'm glad he loved. I thought about yesterday, Lord, we sat there. 
Lord, I'm so glad that you let those sinners. Lord, I thank you, our Father, for didn't believe us in the way. Said, been said so many times, Lord, I'm glad you brought us out of that storm, that <clears throat> danger. Our Father, Lord God, you set us over into everything. The Bible said <coughs> he took us to the end. I'm glad he took us to the end. Somebody to help us. Somebody to love us. But I'm glad he loved us. And I'm glad that it wasn't silver and gold that he gave us. But it was the grace of God and the mercy and the tenderness of God, our Father. And him who loved us and washed us in his own blood. God, we thank you this morning. We thank you, Lord, for your servant, Lord. We appreciate him. God, I ask you to help him and touch him. Dear Lord, bless every heart. Lord, I pray today for our dear brother we, Lord, we love him. We appreciate his family, Lord. And I ask you, Lord, that Lord, as he goes this evening, Lord, would you would you greet on him? Would you bless him, Lord? <clears throat> Lord, we've enjoyed his company. We've enjoyed the fellowship. Lord, we've enjoyed the singing. Our Father, His family, Lord, we appreciate them. God, do for them. We thank you, Lord. You're that good. God, what you do, we'll thank you. We'll bow our worthy heads and thank you and say you did it. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>